is Be Set Free TV, real life Be Set Free TV, whole town revivals. Wow, well we're just here doing a whole town revival in Whitbank and I'm standing here by a massive machine, it's called the, 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 the Kamatsu 1900. Um, this is the, is the exca excavator that loads those, those big Euclid trucks, uh, loads them with coal. Uh, you can see this bucky right next to us, this is a, this is a three litre uh, diesel Hilux, Toyota Hilux. You can see the actual size of, the, of, of, this, of this massive uh, uh, excavator, which is really, it's a 38 litre motor. It burns probably about 1200 litres per nine hours. So you can imagine what that cost is. That's probably about what uh, eight, nine hundred rand, uh, thousand, one thousand, two hundred rand an hour, just on fuel. Well, it's incredible to believe that one man can can drive such a massive machine. And likewise, also with the gospel, that one man, Jesus Christ, could have moved mountains, could have moved oppression, could have moved curses, could remove uh, the law, could remove death, could remove things for us, just one man, what a mighty work he's done. And so we have the light, which is the life of man, which I bring you right now, that life, receive life in Jesus' name. Jesus Be Set Free TV, real life Be Set Free TV, the Holy Spirit flow. Give me your hand. Look at me. I forgive you your sins. I set you free. I bring life to you. Healing to you. Jesus Be Set Free TV, real life Be Set Free TV, the word. I once had a vision in the presence of God and he said to me this and the, the students at the School of Evangelism know this, he said to me this that because he is, I am. And so when people see me, they don't see me, they see him because I, I have now his nature. When you are born again, you no longer have the nature of your father, the father of lies. You no longer have a nature of a child of wrath. You now have his nature because you are a child of God. The children in a family take after the father. In other words, if the father is Muslim, the children will be Muslim. And likewise, you as one of the sons of God, take after your father. You have his name. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow every tongue will confess that Christ is hmm? how does Jesus get there how does Jesus get there he gets there because he's clothed in a garment of righteousness which is you there are no two natures in you you only have one nature you do not have the nature of the devil in you because he's been defeated he's just not a factor any longer you don't have the, uh, you don't have the, 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 the nature of, 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 uh, of perversion anymore. Because the Bible says that he took that upon himself at the cross of Calvary. You don't have the nature of sin. You don't have a sinful nature anymore. Because he took that at the cross. He became, he didn't forgive you, he didn't only forgive you your sins. He became your sin. Let's go quickly to Galatians 2.20. Listen to this. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. In Him I have shared His crucifixion. Now when you were crucified, when you came to the cross, when you were reborn, when you came and gave yourself to Jesus, that's your crucifixion. You didn't suffer any pain. You didn't suffer any pain because He suffered the pain for you. Hmm? It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. 
And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith on the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself up for me. So when I'm born again, it's no longer I that live, but it's now Him who I invited to live in me. He lives His life through me. That's why when I walk, I can, that's why when I go, I can preach. Preach is saying, declaring, I can declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You can touch it. Touch it, please. Just stand up and touch it. Just wait, 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 wait. Let's just have an usher behind this lady. <laughs> Sir, come here. You come here. Come and touch the kingdom of heaven. Come touch it. The kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. It will heal the sick. It will cleanse the lepers. It heals AIDS. It sets the captive free. Freely I have received, so freely I give. The kingdom of heaven. It's in you. Do you believe this? Let's go to Ephesians 2 3. Among these, we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the, in the passions of flesh, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind. We were then by nature the children of wrath and heirs of indignation like the rest of mankind. But God, so rich is He in His mercy, because, of, because and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful intense love which He loved us, even when we were dead by our shortcomings and our trespasses, He made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Jesus Christ. It is by grace that you are saved from the judgment made by the partakers in Christ's salvation. And He raised us up together with Him and made us sit down together in the heavenly sphere. Not heaven, in the heavenly sphere. In Jesus Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. Where you once were a sinner, a child of the, your father, the father of lies, where you once were a child of wrath, where you once were living out the passions of the flesh, where you once were separated from God, now, by His mercy and His grace, He has raised you up to be in the heavenly sphere. And to be seated with Jesus, by, who, by the way, lives in you. You're no longer the old self. When you came to the cross, it was complete. The work was complete. The crucifixion was complete. The death was final. And as the death was final, so your resurrection was sure. Not by anything you could do or could say or could act. And so many people today come to the cross, they don't realize the cross is complete, Pastor. They come to the cross and they try now, they come through the cross and they try now to live a holy life. They try and be good Christians. They try and be obedient people. They try! And when you try something, you are in the law because you're doing something to get something. When you are trying something, it will lead to defeat. That's why so many people that have been in the church are sitting at home. Because that which they have practiced, the religion that they have practiced, the things that they have practiced, have been unto death because they've been in the law. They've had to do certain things to be holy. 
But when you receive His grace, you don't have to do anything anymore. You receive the final work of Calvary. You receive the power of the cross of Calvary. You are no longer here and He's over there. By grace you are together and He lives in you. By what you can do? No. But by everything that He has done at Calvary. If you're watching by television, I'm sorry if the camera just shook. Someone just blew out from the side and knocked the camera stand. Why? Because they've, the, by God's grace they have been set free. They've been practicing law and religion so long that when they receive grace and they receive the Christ in them, they just blow around this place like a rocket. Yes. This man came to Jesus one day, full of religion, full of works, saying that he only had one father, but he was in religion. He was a Jewish, clever man. And he came to Jesus one night. And he said to Jesus, Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Verse 3, Jesus answered him, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a person is born again, born anew from above, he cannot ever see or know and be acquainted with and experience the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter his mother's womb again? Jesus answered, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, unless a man is born of water and even the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again and you're born of water, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. When you are born again, He brings life into your spirit. He, you are born again by His power. You cannot, how do you come to the cross and die at the cross and are resurrected? You cannot, it's by His power, by His grace. By the Spirit and the water. The water, the Revelation, I think it's 22, 1, says from the throne and from the Lamb flows a river of life. Like crystal. The Bible says from your belly flows rivers of living water. Out of the side of Jesus, when Jesus was crucified, out of the side came blood and water. That water. Water has memory. Water today, is still rem water today hasn't left the earth. Water today still remembers, still bears testimony to that water that flow flowed from the throne and from the Lamb that flowed through the Lamb onto earth. Water still has that memory today. That's why when you baptize into water, you baptize into death and you raise up in life because that water still has memory of life. Romans 5.12 Therefore, as sin came into the world through one man, and death as a result of sin, so death spread to all men, because all men sinned. Right? So when you're born, you're born into sin. But God's free gift is not that all be compared to the trespass. For if any died through one man's falling away, much more profusely did God's grace and His free gift through the undeserved favor of one man, Christ Jesus, abound and overflow to many. So as you were born into sin, into the flesh, unto death, by one man's disobedience, now you are able to be reborn into life by one man's obedience, Christ Jesus. And as, as sure enough, as sure as you were a sinner, as sure as you were doing things wrong, as sure as you were living the lusts of your flesh, how sure was that when you were a sinner? Was it sure? It was sure. Because you were with the gooses, you were with the ganders, you were with these guys, those guys were women, you were, in, you were drinking, you were doing everything that you shouldn't do, is that right? It was a sure fact. And now that you are born again, it's a sure fact His righteousness. It's a sure fact His holiness. It's a sure fact His goodness and His mercy and His grace. It's a sure fact that it will come out of you. Where death was a sure fact there, so here life is a sure fact. That's who you are. That's what you've got. You've got life. Romans 7.1. Listen to this carefully. Do you not know, brethren, that I am speaking to men who are acquainted with the law, that legal claims have power over a person only for as long as he is alive? For instance, a married woman is bound by law to a husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, 
she is loosed and discharged from the law concerning her husband. Accordingly, she will be held an adulteress if she unites herself to another man while her husband still lives. But if her husband dies, the marriage law is no longer on binding on her. And if she unites herself to another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ, so that now you may belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that you may bear much fruit of God. When we were living in the flesh, mere physical lives, the sinful passions that were awakened and aroused up by the law were constantly operating in our natural powers in our natural bodies and organs, in the sensitive appetites and the wills of the flesh, so that we bore fruit of death. But now we are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once retained and held us captive. So now we serve under the old code of written regulations. We don't serve under that, but of the spirit of newness. If a woman is married to a man, he is bound, she is bound to her until he dies. If she, if she goes to another man and marries him, while this husband still is alive, she is an adulteress. Right? That's the example he gave. But what was he speaking about? He was speaking about you being married to the law. When you are married to the law, you cannot take on another husband because you're married to the law already, right? And because you're married to the law, your nature and the fruit that you have will be of the law. It will be unto death. Hmm? But the law had to die. And when the law died, because Jesus came to fulfill the law on the cross, when the law died, you now can take on another husband, which is he, which is Jesus Christ. And when you take him on, you are no longer an adulteress because the old man, your old husband, which was the law, has died. You are now free to take on a new husband. And when you take on a new husband, you will bear fruit of that relationship and it will be in life. So you can't be in grace when you're still in law because you'll be an adulterer. Right? But when you've realized that the law is dead, and you're no longer married to the law. You are now free to choose the husband. And that marriage has already happened. It happened at Calvary. Huh? And the garment, that you, the garment that you wear of righteousness, it's yours by grace. And so many people are waiting for that marriage still to happen that even though they've been born again, they still bring the law with them and they commit adultery. But when you realize that the law is fully, fully complete at the cross, it's fully fulfilled by Jesus Christ at the cross, and the marriage happened at the cross, you were, you were married, he, you, were the, you were the bride, he was the bridegroom, where he comes for a bride without spot or wrinkle. That you can't cleanse yourself and you can't take the spot and wrinkle out of you. That was done at Calvary through the blood. And so you are able to receive him again. And what we are living in at the moment is the, is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Which is good things are happening to us. Hmm? Huh? Blessing is yours. Peace is yours. Joy is yours. Fruits of righteousness are yours. Because you are now married to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Jesus is now your husband. And you are clothed now in that robe of righteousness. Not having to do anything or try and work anything out. That's grace. It's already been done with you. You just receive it. Wow. You can't kiss the law, yeah? And around the corner try and kiss the grace. You're a prostitute. But you can't be a prostitute. Why? 
Because He's made it possible. He has made, taken your sin away. He's taken everything away. He's even taken that old nature away. And the fact is He died. The fact is that, sin, well, that, that the law was fulfilled. The fact is sin died. That now when you receive Him as your Savior, like it or not, you're married to Him. Like it or not, you are righteous. Like it or not, you have been set free. You are one nature. You are Him. You are His nature. Even if sometimes you feel you being the other nature, grace will just take you back. He has imprisoned you with Himself. He has bound His life to you. He has bound His righteousness to you. He has bound you to be a success. Romans 6, 6. We know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with Him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive of evil that we may no longer be the slaves of sin. So when you got crucified at the cross, when you came to Jesus through the cross, your body was imprisoned. It was nailed to the cross. That when you came through, it's no longer that you that live, but He that lives in you. That's the nature you have. There is no fighting in you. There is no battle in you. There is no battle against good and evil in you. You are good. You are good. You are good. You have been made righteous. You have the victory. Now, if you were in the law, the law minister would say, now you've got to go and live that victory. No, no, no. Live just the way you are. Live just the way you are. Because He made you that way. And celebrate that. Amen. As you're watching by television, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Live the way He made you. Because that's what He made. You cannot change that. Bless you. Jesus Be Set Free TV Real Life Be Set Free TV Testimonies uh, This is Pastor Alex uh, Suena and my wife Deborah uh, I'm from Whitbank and I've been so blessed especially when I come to understand or to hear that uh, grace and law I came to find out that things which I've been trying to, 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 to get hold of through my own strength, it was utterly useless because of it, it was like uh, I was an Ishmael or whatever. But now I came to find, to, to find out that as, as, as uh, the son, um, the son of the promise, everything is done already by Christ. Mine is just to believe and stand in faith and claim my things. I don't have to work hard for it. That releases me and it's a relief to me. And I thank God for that. I'm grateful and say, let the gospel go forward. Jesus Be Set Free TV. Real life Be Set Free TV. Seed for Souls. Wow. Well, welcome to Seed for Souls. Proverbs 11.25. The liberal person shall be enriched, and he who waters shall himself be watered. If you sow generously, if you water, you yourself shall be watered. Jesus Be Set Free TV, multitudes are saved monthly. Multitudes are healed monthly. Multitudes, multitudes. How will people believe unless a preacher is sent? How does a preacher get sent? Unless you sow a seed for souls. Unless you sow and you yourself shall be watered. Let's have a look how you can sow a seed for souls electronically using your credit card. To sow a seed for souls, go to our website www.jesusbesetfree.tv and click on store. At the top of the store, you have my account. Click on my account. Click on register here and enter in all your details. 
uh, once you completed the customer registration, click on register. Once you've clicked on register, click on the left hand side, Seed for Souls. In Seed for Souls, you have an option. You can sow in multiples of a hundred, you can sow in multiples of a thousand, or you can sow in multiples of ten thousand. Once you've made your choice, click Add. Once you've clicked Add, click Checkout. Once you've clicked Checkout, click Continue. Once you've clicked Continue, check the details and click Confirm. Once you've clicked Confirm, you go onto the Secure Payment page and you click My Gate. Once you've clicked My Gate, you go and enter your credit card details and click Pay Now. Once you've done that, your Seed for Souls will be credited to our account. Your details will come to us. We will then be able to communicate with you and tell you about further upcoming revivals. If you sow a Seed for Souls of 100 Rand or $14, we will give you the MP3 hymn in you. If you sow 150 Rand or $21, we will give you a special teaching on, of Satan who if you sow a seed for souls for 300 Rand or, or $42, we're able to give you the five-part DVD series, Him in You. Or if you want to do a cash purchase, if you like, you can, you can do that, and our details are um, at the bottom of your screen. Or if you want to sow a seed for souls cash, you're able to do that at the bottom of our screen. Or if you want to do a debit order, you can contact the number on our screen. Blessings, blessings, blessings to you as you sow a seed for souls.